Hello cadets, my name is Calera and I'm going to be a junior in high school and I'm currently a senior Girl Scout of Central Illinois. And I'm so excited to help you all earn your first robotics badge as a cadet. Now, today we will learn all about the parts that make up a robot, how to write an algorithm, and how to put a computer code for a robot into action. Before we begin, I would like to make sure that you guys all have the right supplies to complete this badge. Now, if you live in Central Illinois like I do, at all four Girl Scout Central Illinois service centers, there are kits with the right supplies. Now, if you don't live in Central Illinois or don't have access to these kits, that is okay. We'll go over the supplies now. You will need a few sheets of paper, a pencil, some colored pencils or markers or crayons, anything works, some aluminum foil, a light diode, a small battery, some regular tape, some paper clips, one paper clip per scout, a box, like just a regular cardboard box works fine, some scissors, safety glasses, and if you have one of those kits with the, there should be a, ro a picture of a robot on the screen, it, you need a Windows computer. But if you don't have that robot, a regular computer or even a Chromebook works great. So now that you have everything, let's get started. First things first, it's important to understand that robots are everywhere. There are robotic dogs, robotic cats that kids can play with. There are even more complex of toy robots like Cosmo that kids can program themselves. And there are many other toys like this that kids at any age level can get started on programming a robot, which is pretty cool. There are also robots present in many households. And some examples of this would be a robotic lawnmower, a robotic pool cleaner, and even a robotic vacuum. And we'll actually talk more about a robotic vacuum later on in this badge. There are many other places that robots are present. And an example of this would be in manufacturing for businesses. And what this means is that robots can help businesses create their products. Robots are also useful in medicine and even in outer space. And there, what this means is that rovers in outer space can take and collect information all around them up in space and send it back down to people on Earth so we can learn all about outer space without actually having to go there ourselves. Now, there's this thing called artificial intelligence that is also a robot, but what artificial intelligence means is that it is a computer that is so smart that it can think and act just like a human. And this is pretty neat. And an example of artificial intelligence would be an Alexa. And I have an Alexa at my house, and I know some other people that have Alexas. And what's so cool about her is if I'm bored, I can ask her to play a song. I can play a game with her, and I can even have a regular conversation with her if I even want to. And that's just really special that she's able to be so smart that she can go ahead and interact with me. And so the abbreviation for artificial intelligence is AI. And AIs are beginning to be used in education even. And one instance where this is used is when people send in emails to professors or people like that, the artificial intelligence is able to read the email themselves and go ahead and respond to that email. And what's neat about that is that it can save time for professors so they can go ahead and do something something else and that could be more efficient, could be a more efficient use of their time. And also self-driving cars. I know that seems like something that is pretty far off from right now, but it's actually not as far off as we think it is because with the help of artificial intelligence, self-driving cars are in the near future. Now you may be asking yourself, what is the difference between a robot versus like an any electrical device like my phone or an iPad or something like that. And the reason why a robot is different than devices like that is because robots have three abilities. They can sense, think, and act. Now for sense, robots have sensors that take in information of the world around them and report it back to the brain of the robot. And the second ability think is when based on that information that the sensors give the robot, the robot is able to determine what the best action is. 
And then the third ability, act, is after the robot is done thinking, it goes ahead and performs that action by using legs, wheels, helicopter rotors, fans, arms, lights, speakers, and more. Also, robots are way more complex than ordinary machines, and they have five basic parts that make up a robot. They have sensors, which again, take in information about the world around them. They have, their second part is a controller, and the controller processes the information that the sensors give them. It is basically the brain of the robot. Then the third part, the housing of the robot, and this is just the materials that make up the robot's body. So the housing is the robot's body. Then the fourth part is an actuator, and this is what gives a robot movement. And this is like, an example of an actuator would be like a motor. And then the fifth part is an effector, and an effector of a robot is any part of the robot that moves. So like if I was a robot, my effectors would be like my arms or my legs. So now go ahead and grab a piece of paper, think of a robot in your head, and go ahead and draw that robot. And keep in, and make sure to keep in mind the three abilities and five parts that make up that robot. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I have. So I decided I wanted my robot to be able to play soccer with me. So what, you can take a look at mine, and here I have my sensors labeled, and I decided I wanted my robot sensors to be on its feet because I want my robot to play soccer with me. So it needs to be able to tell how far away the ball is. And then my effectors are my robot's legs because that's the part of the robot that moves. Then over here I have my actuators and my actuators would be here and here because I would need some sort of motor to help give my robot movement. Then over here is the housing of my robot because that is the entire robot's body. Then finally, my robot's controller. I wanted my robot's controller to be at its head because that's where I wanted my robot to do its thinking. So now that you've turned and talked to your neighbor, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next part, which is all about sensors. So on a real robot, sensors take information about the world around it and change it into electrical inputs which tell the robot what to do. So there are different types of sensors that are, can be on a robot. There are sensors that tell whether or not the robot is up, upside down, if it's in what direction it is facing. There are also environmental sensor, sensors that can tell the brightness, dampness, temperature, and air quality around the robot. There are also proximity sensors, which can tell who is near, what is near, and if something is in the way of the robot. And what is so cool about sensors is that they allow the robot to discover information and decide what to do without the help of humans, which is pretty neat. So we're gonna go ahead and build our own sensor. So what our sensor is going to do, it's going to help the robot to know whether or not it is touching something. And we are making a pressure sensor. So the things you need for this part of the badge is some paper, one sheet of paper per scout, some aluminum foil, a light with two prongs, your light diode, some regular tape, a paper clip, a small battery, some safety glasses, and scissors. And when I'm going through this activity, feel free to pause it whenever if I'm going too fast and just wait till everyone catches up. So feel free to pause. All right, so now that you have all of your supplies laid out, Go ahead, grab your safety glasses, and put those on. So this is what our finished product will look like. So just keep that in mind for now. So first we're going to go ahead and we are going to take the right flap of our paper and fold it over just like that and create a crease. Then we're going to do this, make another crease, and this time we're going to make a triangular one. Does not have to be exact because this will end up changing a little bit later on, probably. So it's just to give us an idea. So.
So go ahead, I've already taken three pieces of tin foil, but you want three pieces of tin foil about this size. So go ahead, fold your piece of tin foil, hot dog style. You want to make sure it's nice and thick. And make sure the creases are smoothed out. So it should look like that. So we're going to go ahead and do that same thing to our other three pieces. Okay, so now you should have three pieces that look like this. So put those to the side, bring your paper back, and take one of those pieces and cut it in half. You want it to be about at the halfway point so from the bottom to the middle halfway point. So I need to cut a little bit off still. Hmm, I don't think that's fine. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tape. You're gonna tape it down, but watch carefully at where I'm putting the tape. I'm going to put my tape on the edges in the middle and you don't want the tape to be fully covering the aluminum foil because what we are doing is we are making a circuit and the tape will block that electrical current if it's over here and it's fully covering. So just keep it on the edge. So put away those extra piece, those scrap pieces and go ahead and grab one of those pieces that you had folded earlier and you are going to measure it and then cut it so it fits the length from your crease to the edge of the paper. So I'm gonna cut mine off right here. Then I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to tape it along the edges. So I'm going to do that. So that's what it should look, look like so far. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put this last piece of tin foil that you folded at the beginning and you're going to cut it the exact same way that we just cut the last one. So, snip it right there. And now what you're gonna do is you're going to cut this in half. And it does not have to be exact. Okay, so now you have two half pieces and take one of your pieces and cut this one into about two thirds. So about right there and take the smaller piece and toss that aside. So next what we're going to do is we're gonna line those up about halfway. We wanna make sure this is close to this piece over here, but we wanna make sure that none of these aluminum foil pieces are touching. So it should look something like that. So now tape along the edges again.
Okay, now next you are going to take a look at your light diode and notice the long and short prong. Now the long prong is the positive end and the short prong is the negative end. So be sure to pay attention to where the positive or where the long and short prong are, okay? So now what you're going to do is gently split those prongs away from each other. So gently. Okay. And so my long prong is over here. So I'm going to place the wrong the long prong on the right tin foil and the short prong on the left tin foil. And then I'm going to tape those prongs down onto the tin foil. And this time you can completely cover that prong and tape because that prong and aluminum foil are touching and that is where that current is going to go through. So there's that. So next go ahead and grab your battery and take you want to make sure that the positive side is facing up and put that battery about the middle about the middle of your piece of aluminum foil and now take one piece of tape and fold or tape that battery down but you want to make sure that the tape is as close to the edge of that battery as possible so I have my tape just going barely across it just so it makes sure that it stays. Next grab a paper clip and what you're gonna do is you're going to fold. Remember when we made that triangular crease? It doesn't really matter if the crease lines up with the battery or not but just make sure that these two pieces fold over to touch the battery. And you want to make sure that the battery is completely covered by that piece of aluminum foil. So hold that down, crease it, grab your paper clip, and make sure that is nice and secure. So now this is what should happen. It should light up. Now, if yours is not laying, is not lighting up, you might have to make sure that there's no tape covering here, here, there, there, or the battery. Now, if there's no tape covering it, you want to make sure that the aluminum foil is complete. That this circuit is being completely connected when you push that down. Or if that isn't even working, it might be that the battery and this piece of aluminum foil are not completely connected. So what I do sometimes to fix that is I just take another piece of tape and I just tape right over it. So now it is extra secure and then it should work like that. So there you go, you just made a pressure sensor circuit. So the way this works is when pressure is applied, the circuit is connected. And the reason why the, the circuit is just right here is because paper is not a conductor of electricity, meaning it is an insulator. Now the, the conductors present in our circuit is the aluminum foil, the light diode prongs, our battery, our paper clip, but the thing that is not a conductor is the tape, which is why we wanted to make sure that it was not touching as that was we wanted to make sure that it was touching as little of these materials as possible. 
So, this, when it is shut, this causes electricity and energy to flow within the circuit. And the light flashing on and off of our pressure sensor represents the signals that would be going from the sensor to the controller of the robot. An example of a pressure sensor like that in real life would be a light switch. Now, when I go ahead and click this light switch, the light is turned on. And when this light is turned on, that is like our light flashing on and off on our pressure sensor that we just created. So over here, there's a dimmer light switch. And basically the difference between this light switch and this one is that over here, there's more electricity being sent through that circuit than this one over here, which is causing the difference in the lighting. So that is a great example of a pressure sensor like that in real life. Okay, so now that you've made your pressure sensors, go ahead and grab your cardboard box. What I want you to do is tape your pressure sensor to the side of the box. Now, if you have multiple people, go ahead and tape it on multiple sides of the box. I have pressure sensors on three sides of my box. And if there's too many people, that's okay. Just go ahead and grab another box. And what I want you guys to do now that you have it taped on is to go ahead and move your box around, making sure to hit plenty of objects. Okay, hit your pressure sensors on objects like that. So there. So pause the video and do that. Okay, so now that you've gone ahead and hit your robot on different objects, what does the light flashing on and off represent? Pause and discuss. So that light flashing on and off represents that signal being sent from the sensor to the controller of the robot. And basically it is telling the robot that there is an object there. Which leads me to the next question. Why may it be important for robots to have sensors like this? Pause and discuss. Yeah, so it is important for robots to have pressure sensors like this so it knows that if it hits an object it either needs to stop or back away. Now, the reason why this is so important is because if this was a big robot and my hand was right here and the robot hit my hand and kept going. My hand, oh, I might have to take a trip to the emergency room. Also, if this robot was smaller and there was a big object that it ran into, the robot itself could be damaged. So either way, the robot needs to know that it needs to turn off its wheels or back up and away from that object. So lastly, what part of a robot does the cardboard box represent? Pause and discuss. The housing. The cardboard box represents the body of the robot, which is the housing. So go ahead, and now that we're done with our box model robots, we're gonna put those aside and get started on the next thing. Next, we will discuss the programming aspect of robotics. And so we understand how robots get information about its environment through its sensors. But how does a robot know how or what to do with that information? And that is where computer programming is involved. And with computer programming, there are algorithms. And an algorithm is a set of step-by-step -step instructions. And programmers, people who create robots, are responsible for giving their robots a set of step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. So when a robot is given these instructions, this is known as computer programming. And we are going to be going over four basic things that a programmer can tell its robot what to do. So the first thing is a command, and a command is an individual step of what to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys what a command is. And so it's one step. So if I, so telling my robot to go forward, that's one step. That's a command. Or to turn, that's one command. So just one single action, one single thing, that is a command. The next thing is a function, and this is a series of commands that you can give a name. 
Now you may be wondering, what does that mean to give a series of commands a name? So basically, if I told my robot that if it hits an object, I want to stop moving, to turn, to move forward. So that is three commands right there. Stop moving, turn, move forward. That's three commands. And if I'm going to be doing that a lot within my program, it can get a little repetitive. So I'm going to name that series of commands, that function, as object. I'm going to say object equals stop, turn, move. So anytime the programmer would say object within that program, the robot would knew that it needed to stop moving, turn, and move forward. So that's where naming functions can be helpful. Next, a loop, which is tells the robot to repeat some steps of a program for a certain amount of time. Now loops can go on forever, but most of the time they need to end at some point. And an example of this would be like, if I had a muffin sitting right in front of me. So I'm a robot, there's a muffin. And my programmer told me to keep biting my muffin. To keep taking a bite. What happens when I when there's no more muffin? What happens when I eat the entire muffin? Well, so my as a robot, I might be a little confused. I might do some wacky action like start banging onto the table or something. Something crazy. So my loop would have to end when my muffin is gone. So next is a conditional statement and a conditional statement gives the robot a choice of what to do. And a popular conditional statement is an if then else statement. And an example of an if then else statement would be if the shirt is more than ten dollars then I won't buy it. Else I will buy it. So basically what this means, if I walk into a store and I find a $17 shirt, well, so the if statement, if the shirt is more than $10, it is, that is a true statement because my shirt is $17. So I go to the then action, which says then I won't buy it, so I'm not going to buy it and I move on. But if I walk into a store and I find a shirt that is $6. And I my if statement says, if the shirt is more than $10, that is false. That's a false statement because my shirt is $6. So because it is false, I go to the else statement, which is then I will buy it. So because my shirt is less than $10, I'm gonna buy that shirt. So those four basic things, commands, functions, loops, and conditional statements are some of the most important things you need to know when programming. So because writing an actual computer program takes a little bit more knowledge than we know, we are going to be writing in pseudocode today. Now don't worry, pseudocode isn't as intimidating as it may sound. It's just a really fancy word for writing a computer program in everyday language, which you guys will be pros at. So go ahead and grab a paper and a pencil and think of a familiar everyday task. And what I want you to do is we're going to write an algorithm with step-by-step -step instructions of how to complete that task. So some examples of things you could do would be like making a box of mac and cheese, walking down a staircase, making tea, doing your laundry, folding your laundry, or any other task that you can think of. So what I want you to do is to write down those steps on your piece of paper and pause the video and do that now. Okay, so now that you've gone ahead and written out the instructions for your own task, I'm going to go through mine. And I decided I wanted my task to be to fill a glass of water. So my first instruction is to walk to the cupboard. Then I have grab a glass, walk to the fridge, put a glass on water dispenser, fill with water to the top, then I have done. Easy peasy. 
But now what I want you all to do is I want you guys to go through your instructions and see where you can add in functions, loops, and conditional statements. And I'm going to show you what I mean by this. So my first step is to walk to the cupboard. But what is walk? What does it mean to walk? If I were to tell someone who has never done this before to walk to the cupboard, how would they know to do that? So what I think walk means is to put left foot out front of the other and then put right foot out in front of the other. So I have two commands, put left foot out in front, put right foot out in front. And I'm going to label that function as walk, okay? So then I have a loop and I'm saying walk until you reach the cupboard. So that is a loop right there. I'm going to keep walking until I make it to the cupboard. So then once I reach the cupboard, I stop walking and I have for my second step, which is grab a glass, I have raise arm up, which is a command, reach forward, another command, wrap fingers around glass, and then I, so that is all around, that is all for grabbing a glass. And then my third step, walk to the fridge, I have walk until you're at the fridge, then I have for put glass on water dispenser, I have reach forward, and then set glass down. So all throughout here, I just have a bunch of little commands telling this person what to do. So my next step is to fill with water to the top. But for this one, I'm going to do a loop and a conditional statement. So I'm going to say, well, first off, I'm going to say one more command, which is to press the water button. Now I'm going to do my loop. So I have one filling, so my water dispenser is going to continuously be filling my glass. So now I have my conditional statement, which is if the water is an inch below the top of the cup, then stop filling. So basically if the water, during this loop, if the water gets to just one inch below the top of the cup, then it is going to stop filling. And since I want that to, then since there, that is the end of my program, I have break there. And then, so my else is to keep filling. So basically, my robot will be checking consistently how full this glass of water is. So if the, in, the, if the water is an inch below the top of the cup, then it's going to stop filling and stop the entire program. So if the water is not an inch below the top of the cup, then it's going to keep filling and keep checking until it is at fine until until it is finally just one inch below the top of the cup. And then at the end I have congrats, you have water. So yours does not have to be as complex as mine, but really try to find where you can put in your own functions, loops, and conditional statements. So pause the video and try this out. Add in your functions, loops, and conditional statements. Go ahead and trade papers with another Girl Scout. And what I want you all to do now is to look at that person's function, or look at that person's program, and see if you can find any errors in it. And if you find an error, that is known as a bug. And if you find a bug, just kindly tell the person whose paper you have and say, I think there's a bug in your program. And what that person needs to do now is go ahead and fix that bug. And that is known as debugging. And this happens all the time. Whenever you get an update on an app, a lot of the times that's because the creators of the app are fixing a bug. So go ahead and trade, trade your papers now and do that. should be all set and congratulations you just wrote your very own algorithm now you know the basics of programming a robot okay so the next step is learning how algorithms and sensors and robots all work together so a program 
can say to a sensor that if the robot encounters water, so if the sensor encounters water, then you got to stop working and get away from that spot because this robot does not like water because this robot is going to break if it is in water. Else it can continue. So basically, if the robot finds water, then it has to get away from there. Otherwise, it can keep working and doing its own thing and doesn't have to worry about it because there's no water. So that is just one example with many commands of what to do, telling the robot what to do. And sometimes a lot of commands are actually necessary in order to get the job done. So our last activity for this badge, we are going to be programming a vacuum to clean a room. If you have a robot to one of those kits, go ahead and there should be a time shown of what point in the video to go to because people without the, those robots can, they're going to do a different activity right now. So people with the robots, leave us. People with the robots, stay. Okay, so those of you who don't have a robot, that's totally fine. What you need for this is just a piece of paper, a pencil, and a Chromebook or just regular computer. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I want you to do now. Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and draw out the layout of your bedroom. So this is mine. I have my bed right here. I have a nightstand, a storage box, a desk, and some shelves, and a bench all along this wall. So go ahead and draw out a basic layout of your room. And pause the video, do that, and come back when you're done. All right, so now that you all have the layouts of your room, Go ahead and pause the video to get out your computers and go to Google. And once you've all reached that point, return back to this video and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now that you have your computers out, go ahead and search make block. Scroll down to where it says M block and click on it. Click on code with blocks. And now that you're here, click on sprites. Exit out of the panda. Delete. And now what I want you to do is to click on this plus. Click on paint. Okay, so now that we're here, basically what we are doing is we are drawing our layout on here. So everything that we draw in this space is going to line up over here. Or we need it to line up to over here. So you can change the colors, the outline, and then there are different shapes, and you can even use text. So I'm going to show you how to do a basic thing. So I'm going to do my bed. So I, I selected the rectangle, I'm going to change my color, and I don't want an outline, so I'm going to go to zero there, then I'm just going to draw that shape and go for it. So see how it doesn't li line up to over here? So you just got to play around with it until it does. Okay, I'm happy with that. So then to do another shape, you would do the exact same thing. And if you wanted to change the color, then you could go, once you have it selected, and change that color. There. Also, to move anything, make sure to switch back over to the mouse, and then move it. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I got my... I got all these shapes over here that line up perfectly on this side for my layout. So now that I'm done with that, so remember you guys, whenever you want, go ahead and pause the video and wait to catch up with me. So now that you are done with your layouts, go ahead, click X on costumes, and go over here, click on the little plus, and basically what we are doing is we are choosing a sprite to represent our vacuum cleaner. So you can take a moment, look at this, look at all the sprites, 
And I've already figured out what I want mine to be. So what I am doing, so I found that I really like this car. I think it's a cute little panda. So I'm gonna click on it and click okay. All right, so this is a little big, I think. I think the scale is a little off for vacuum cleaner to my room. So I'm going to fix that by clicking on costumes. And then I have the mouse selected and I'm going to draw a box around this. And then I'm just gonna shrink it. And I think I'm good with, I'm good with that size. So I'm gonna, again, click on X on costumes. Okay, so now that you have your layout done, you've selected a vacuum cleaner, now we get to program our vacuum cleaner. So I'm just gonna show you the basic things that can go into your program. And first off, you're going to need an event. So any of these things, and this is just going to be when your program starts. So I'm choosing that when the flag is clicked, so when this flag over here is clicked, that's when my program will start. So I want my vacuum cleaner to start over here. So I'm gonna to go to motion and see where it says go to X, Y. So I wanna use that, but in order to use the graph, I gotta add the graph in. So over here, you can click on this and it adds that graph. So now you can click the go to X, Y and you can change that coordinate and I'm going to find a coordinate that I want to put there. Okay, so now that I have the right coordinate, I'm going to use the glide for one second to another coordinate. Drop that in there. And all this means is that whatever coordinate I select, this is going to take one second to move over there. So I'm going to add that coordinate in. And then I'm going to see if I like how it looks so far. Mmm, that's way too far over. I'm gonna fix it. Oops, wrong number. All right, I'm good with that. So you'll notice throughout the process of me making my program, I will continuously be going over it and checking to see if it's right. And this is helpful because it, you can find many mistakes here and there so that you don't get to the end and have a whole bunch of mistakes and have to try and figure out where those mistakes are coming from. So it's good to check your program here and there. So I am going to keep on using those glides and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Okay, so this is what I have so far. So when the flag is clicked, there. So basically, now that my vacuum cleaner has done that area, I want it to go up and across all the way up here until I get to this blue up here. So I am going to be doing a loop. So to get to the loops, you can click on Control, and there's all of these different loops, and there's even conditional statements. So see the if, then, and else. So what I'm going to do is I am going to select the repeat 10 and then this is a loop right here but i am going to end up changing this 10 later on i just don't know how much i want it to be for now so i am going to go ahead and create my loop okay so i have my loop in here and I, you'll notice i have that these functions like it's where it says change x by 10 change Y by 10, and I have these say hello for two seconds in here as well. So the change X by 10 you'll find in the motion, and it, the change X by 10 is right here, and the change Y by 10 is below it. So all this does is it moves, so since the 10 is there, it will move your sprite, your vacuum cleaner, 10 units that way. So it will move your sprite 10 units over. And the same thing goes for the Y. So 10 units over and then 10 up. So it just changes, it just adjusts the coordinate that your sprite is at. 
So I am going to change those because I want my sprite to move in bigger increments than that. So I'm going to change it. So I adjusted all the increments that are for, that are on my loop. And also, so I have these say hello for two seconds. And all that is doing is going to pause my vacuum cleaner between each between each function or thing I want it to do. So I'm just going to have a little fun with it and I'm going to have my vacuum cleaner say vroom, because you know vacuum cleaners make that sound. So, and then you can also adjust how long you want this to take. So how long you want it to pause and say that thing. So I don't want it to be for very long, so I'm gonna change it to half a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that off and show you what this looks like so far. So there's that beginning part. And then here is my loop. So it just moves up the up and across vacuuming that area of my room. But you'll notice that it goes on a little too far. It has too many, it repeats too many times. So I'm going to try a different number, see if seven loops works out better. I'm also going to add that in there to my entire program. So I'm going to click on the flag. All right, so I am happy with that. So now you should all get the basic idea of how to write your program on MakeLock. And yours does not have to be exactly like mine. In fact, I would encourage you to look at more of the functions that it has, more of the blocks that it allows you to use, and go ahead and try it out. And so I have only done this one spot over here. But I would pretty much, I would go ahead and I would use the glide over here to get this small area. So what I want you to do is to go ahead and program your own vacuum cleaner to vacuum your room. Oh my gosh, you guys. We're done. You just learned all about robots, how to build a pressure sensor, how to make a box model robot, and you learned about programming, and even wrote a program for a robot. And because you did all that, you earned your first robotics badge for programming robots. So congrats, and thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you in another video to earn another badge. So bye. Okay, so for those of you who have those ShieldBot robots, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to use them. So leaders in those kits that you guys have, there should have been some pre-badge instructions and you should have downloaded M-Link. Now, since you guys have already done that, go ahead and just open up mlink and return to Google. So open mlink and then go to a new tab like I have on my screen. So if you guys didn't already download mlink, just go ahead and go through those instructions now and meet me back at this video once you have that completed. So like I said, just open mlink and go to a new tab so then search and block and then you guys click on the link and then scroll down to code with blocks and so we are going to be connecting the shieldbot robots to the computers so you're gonna go here and click Add. 
And then I want you to search shield bot. Oh, well, there it is. And then, so select it, then click OK. And just remember, if I'm going too fast, just pause it and just return the video when you have that step completed. So now I am going to go ahead and show you guys a program that you can do with your robots. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of different blocks that you can choose from. And basically these blocks are how you are going to be coding your robot. So this is one example that I have. So I'm going to start my program off with this when ShieldBot starts up. So basically, this tells the robot that when you turn on the robot, when you flip the switch, that's when it's going to start the program. And now I actually want my robot to do something. So I'm going to go to action. And you can use any of these, but for my example, I am going to spin right. And then I'm going to go to control and use this one. Wait one second. And this tells the robot to spin right for one second. And then I want to drive forward. And I'm going to wait one second again. But actually, I don't want it to be one second. I want it to be three, so I'm just going to change that. Then after that, I'm going to go back to the action and I want to turn left. So turn left for, we'll try, Let's just do half a second, maybe. Will it do half a second? Yes, it will. And then I am going to do stop, because that is the end of my program. And now all I have to do is connect it to my robot to send the program that I just created to the shield bot. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. Okay, so we are trying to get this program over to that robot. And what you guys need to, in order to do this, is this cord. And it might say Arduino on it. So this is the cord that is going to send the program over to the robot. And so what you need to do is go ahead and unravel it. And you are going to take this end to the cord, one that looks like this, and you're gonna plug it into your robot. And it should plug in right there. Okay, so now I have it plugged in. I'm going to set it down. And then I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to plug it into my computer. Okay, so all plugged in. Okay, so now we are going to be connecting the shield bot to the computer. So first you need to go down here and click connect. Click on show all connectable devices and I'm using a Windows comp computer and what comes up is COM3 and this works for Windows but I know that like Chromebooks have a different thing you need to select and so it is not COM3 for all computers but it's easy to figure out. So once you have the right thing selected go ahead and click connect and now all you have to do to send this program over to the shield bot is you go down here and click upload and there it goes and 
Easy peasy, all done. Okay, so now that the program has been sent over to the shield bot, just go ahead and unplug. And what you're gonna do to turn it on is first off, you're gonna set it safely on the ground and then you're gonna flip this switch. So I'm gonna show you guys what the program I made looks like. So I have my shield bot safely on the ground. So I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna go on the ground and I'm gonna flip that switch. Remember this one right here, I'm gonna flip it on. So here we go. There we go. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yup, you could. Awesome. So that was my program. So you guys can go ahead and just make whatever programs you like. It can be as small or as big or as crazy and complex as you like. So remember, I'm going to show you guys some things to remember when doing your programs. Okay, so say I change this program and I want, I'm just going to change this to five, okay? So I'm just doing that to remind you guys that each time you change your program, you're going to have to go after, you're going to have to plug in your shield bot, remember, to that cord, and you're going to have to go to connect, show all devices, you're gonna have to do that all over again, okay? And then when you're ready to upload, you gotta click upload, and boom. Just know you have to do those steps every time you upload a new program. And also, when you're done with the program, make sure to turn off your shield bot. So turn on when you're having the program running, turn it off for everything else, okay? So I've told you guys everything, so just go ahead and make your robots do some cool things. Oh my gosh, you guys. We're done. You just learned all about robots, how to build a pressure sensor, how to make a box model robot, and you learned about programming, and even wrote a program for a robot. And because you did all that, you earned your first robotics badge for programming robots. So congrats, and thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you in another video to earn another badge. So bye!